Hello everyone. This is third MCQ. I am uploading on this YouTube channel. So in the stem of MCQ, 10 years old female child admitted with complaints of headache since last one month and also had first episode of focal aware seizure in the morning. Focal aware means child is having the movement of one limb or one side of the body and consciousness remain normal at the time of seizure. In history, her development appropriate according to the age, IQ also normal as she is doing well in the school. General physical systemic examination also normal, blood investigation also within normal limit. Then in MRI brain, single ring enhancing lesion present. So this is the image of MRI given with the MCQ. Here you can see the ring enhancing lesion is there and also you can see the conglomeration with the ring enhancing lesion and lesion is surrounded by the large perilesional edema, severe edema is there. Now further in the stem of MCQ, magnetic resonance spectroscopy MRS showed the grossly diminished N acetyl aspartate peak while the presence of a specific lipid P. It is significant finding. I am going to tell you later on what is the significance of this. So what is the best initial therapy for this patient? So go one by one. So first option is carbamazepine. Carbamazepine is the drug of choice for focal seizure. So whenever patient is having focal seizure, either focal aware or complex partial seizure, focal with the loss of consciousness, we start the carbamazepine as a first line therapy. But we start the anticonvulsant whenever patient is having two or more than two seizures. So here is the first episode of seizure only. And this is the symptomatic treatment, not going to cure the disease also. According to the history and MRI and MRS finding, it suggests that patient is suffering from infective inflammatory granuloma, intracranial space occupying lesion. So this is not going to cure the disease. So this is not the best initial therapy. Now the second option is acyclovir. Acyclovir is the drug of choice for herpes simplex encephalitis. In herpes simplex encephalitis, MRI will uh, show the lesions in the temporal and frontal lobe. Hyper intensity lesions will be there. Ring lesions are very, very rare, very rare finding in the MRI with the herpes simplex encephalitis. It is not the common finding. So again, it is not the right choice. Now the C option, albendazole and dexamethasone. These are the drug we start for the neurocysticercosis. But in this image, you can see the ring enhancing lesion with the severe perilesional edema is there. While in the NCC, edema either not present or present, then only mild perilesional edema will be there. And the MRI finding will be depend on the stages of NCC. Either patient is having vesicular phase or colloid phase or calcified phase. So it depends on this either cyst lesion if the live cyst is present or if inactivated phase is there then ring, disc or calcified lesion will be there. So depend on stage. So, this MRI finding is not in favor of NCC. Now, the D option is anti-tubercular drug and prednisolone. So, here according to the MRI finding, ring enhancing lesion, it is suggesting that patient is having tuberculoma. And to differentiate tuberculoma and NCC, if small ring enhancing lesion without or minimal perilesional edema, then we can go for MRS spectroscopy. If presence of lipid peak, it suggests that patient is suffering from tuberculoma. It is a specific test for the difference of NCC and tuberculoma. So the right answer for this MCQ is anti-tubercular drug and prednisolone.
Now the learning points are two important causes of ring enhancing lesion in brain in India are neurocysticercosis and tuberculoma. While in the other countries, primary brain tumor or metastasis are more common. Brain abscess, other granulomas, some resolving hematomas or in part can also present as a ring enhancing lesion. Even in HIV AIDS, toxoplasmosis, some fungal infection, cryptococcosis, histoplasmosis, ring enhancing lesion can be seen in the MRI brain. Demyelinating diseases or radiation induced necrotic lesion all will present as a ring enhancing lesion. Now this table is showing the difference between neurocysticercosis and the tuberculoma. So the according to the shape, size or various points we can differentiate either it is NCC or tuberculoma. So shape, round shape in NCC, irregular in tuberculoma, size less than 20 mm favors the NCC while the more than 20 mm favors the tuberculoma. Ring lesion, ring enhancement will be present in both. So, contrast enhancing ring or disc lesions present in NCC according to the stage as I said previously also. Either cyst, ring, disc or calcified lesions will be present in NCC. While in tuberculoma, conglomerated ring enhancing lesions. Thickness of ring less in NCC more in the tuberculoma. Escolex present in one third patients of NCC absent in tuberculoma. Midline shift not common with the NCC with, while common with the tuberculoma. Mild perilesional edema present with the NCC while the severe perilesional edema present with tuberculoma. It is again depend on stage of NCC. If patient is having calcified stage or cystic lesion in vesicular phase then no edema will be there. Focal neurological deficit not common with the NCC while common with the tuberculoma. Changes of meningitis not with the NCC while common with the tuberculoma. Patient may have the tuberculoma with the TBM. Sign of raised ICT not with the NCC while common with the tuberculoma. MR spectroscopy is very specific to differentiate these two. So, amino acid peak present with the NCC while the lipid lactate peak present with the tuberculoma. In treatment, we have to start the albendazole 15 mg per kg per day divided in BD doses for 28 days. A steroid should be started at least 2 to 3 days before starting the albendazole. Either dexamethasone 0.6 mg per kg per day or prednisolone 2 mg per kg per day orally two to three days before starting albendazole and should be continued for next five days. While in the tuberculoma, we have to give the AKT anti-tubercular drug for 12 months with prednisolone 2 mg per kg per day for four to eight weeks. For further learning about the focal aware seizure, you can watch this video on my channel. So thank you so much.